This video is sponsored by Satisfy. Please keep in mind that sponsorships like these help to make silly little videos like this one possible. So I could have had an easy time with this video. You know, I could have just sat down, relaxed and do a simple run of New Super Mario Bros. U while permanently crouching. That would have been an okay video. We probably would have struggled hard in a couple of stages, we probably would have had to figure out a couple of neat tricks in order to progress and in the end we probably would have pulled out that dramatic music and then, well then we probably would have succeeded. It would have been a fine video, we all would watch it, feel a little warmth around our frozen hearts and then completely forget about it. So as you probably guessed by now already, this is not what we're going to do today. Because even though the title might suggest otherwise, this video isn't solely about trying to beat New Super Mario Bros. U while permanently crouching. Because this video is actually about finding the smallest possible way to beat New Super Mario Bros. U. So a bit of context, a while ago we did a run for New Super Mario Bros. Wii while permanently crouching. And there I stated that we found a way to beat the game in the smallest way possible. So, as the comment section was quick to point out to me, beating the game while duck hopping isn't the smallest way to beat it. Because after devouring a mini mushroom, Mario is even smaller. But the absolutely smallest version of Mario, well, that is a crouch hopping mini Mario. And this is exactly what we're trying to do today. Basically, we're going to try to beat Mario U in the smallest way imaginable. We'll try to bunny hop through all of Bowser's dangerous levels as the tiniest version of Mario. So as you probably can imagine, this silly little premise not only makes the game a bit more challenging, but it also complicates a lot of otherwise trivial tasks. So are you ready? Well then, um, please keep your readiness for just a second. Like, keep the readiness ready, because before we actually do this, First word from our sponsor. So I'm usually a bit careful with sponsorships since I'm not a huge fan of associating myself with random products. But the thing is, I have like really big hands. I like my hands, but they are like, you know, like adult male hands big, which is as big as hands usually get. So why am I telling you about my hands? Well, because my hand size actually always caused me problems when playing on handhelds. Best case, a handheld was just uncomfortable to use. Worst case, I got cramps after playing on it for an hour. So as much as I love my Switch, that's sadly a problem I have with it as well, which is where the actual advertisement part of today's silly little sponsorship shill comes into play. So Satisfy is this small American company that a couple of years ago successfully launched a Kickstarter to produce gaming grips for the Switch, which they call the Sandgrip Pro. So I was always looking for something to make handheld gaming on the Switch more enjoyable and bought one of their grips like, like over a year ago? And I love it to death. Playing anything on the Switch with this thing is just like 10 times more comfortable than without it. Basically, whenever I end up playing anything for more than 3 minutes in handheld mode, I end up using the same grip. So the Satisfy team recently reached out to me and, you know, sometimes you end up being so happy with a purchase that you really have to monetize it. So if anyone is looking for a grip to make handheld gaming on the Switch a much more enjoyable experience, I can honestly recommend the Sand Grip. They also have a couple of other really neat products like the most intelligently designed handheld case I've ever seen. You can check out all the amazing stuff they make by clicking on the link in the description. Satisfy was kind enough to agree to give everyone who is interested in grabbing something from them a 10% discount. Make sure to use the code CIF10 to get your purchase 10% cheaper. Hooray! <sighs> So everyone still remembers their readiness, well then grab your readiness to get ready again. Let's do this. Alright, so since the premise of the run is a bit silly, let's start by talking about the rules. So basically there are only two major rules that we have to keep in mind while playing the game. Rule 1. We have to do everything in the smallest way possible. So the base idea is to find out if it is possible to beat the game crouching while also being mini Mario, but since the mini mushroom isn't available from the very beginning, more on that in a second, we have to crouch up towards the first mini mushroom as normal small Mario. Which brings us to our second rule. We have to permanently hold down the down button during normal gameplay, except for ground pounds. Okay, so that one should be self-explanatory. Normal gameplay means that we aren't allowed to let go of the crouch button while playing the game, but pressing up to enter doors or pipes or on the world map is fair game since, well, since the game isn't playable otherwise. Ground pounds are allowed since we are able to perform them without leaving the crouched state. Basically, if we are in air, let go of the down button for a second and then press it again, then Mario does a ground pound without stopping to crouch. Hooray! Our basic form of movement is bunny hopping. So why are we only hopping around? Well, that's for an actually surprisingly simple reason. We can't move otherwise. It's simply not possible in Mario U to walk into any direction while ducking. 
The only way we are able to change our position is by, well, by hopping, which is our only form of movement throughout the run. Finally, let's talk about wall jumps. If we're in a crouch animation, we aren't able to do a wall jump, but there are several ways to leave the crouching animation for a second without violating our second rule, and that is either by jumping off of the slope or by performing a jump immediately after landing. So for whatever reason, there is an about two frame window after landing, where if we immediately press the jump button again, we confuse Mario, which causes him to jump using his normal animation instead of the ducking animation, even though we still hold down the down button. That's really tricky to do, but at least in theory, it allows us to perform a wall jump. Awesome. So finally, before we finally take a look at the run, Let's talk about routing. So there are several things that we want to ensure with our routing. First, we want to route in a way that allows us to get a mini mushroom as fast as possible, since the whole idea of this silly little run is to find out if it is possible to beat the game crouching as mini Mario. Second, since each stage has the potential to feature a run destroying mechanic, we obviously want to enter as little stages as possible, which means that we try to take as many secret exits as possible. And finally, we have to avoid any stages where we have to do something big. Since, well, since the idea of the run is to beat the game small, and big isn't small, which directly leads us to our first tiny problem. And what a problem it is. It is basically a philosophical problem. So YouTube comment section, please help me solve this riddle. When trying to be small, is it better to be big once in order to become even smaller sooner, or is it better to stay small, avoiding to do the big thing, even if this means that we pass up on an opportunity to be even smaller after being big? I've lost some sleep over this question. So what's the deal? We have two different options to unlock the mini mushroom. For anyone who hasn't spent an afternoon of their life trying to decode the mini mushroom spawning mechanics of New Super Mario Bros. U, here's how they work. So basically, whenever we finish a stage with 66 left on the clock, the friendly toad that calmly waits at the end of each stage rewards us a mini mushroom. Cool. So why don't we just do that in the very first stage, which would mean that we are awesome and tiny for the entirety of the run. Well, that is because it is not possible to obtain a mini mushroom via this method right when the game starts. There are certain triggers that we have to hit, because otherwise the kind toad at the end of the stage doesn't give us an amazing tiny mini mushroom, but a gigantic and disgusting normal mushroom. Ew. So there are two ways to convince the end of the level toad to start to hand out mini mushrooms. Which brings us back to the second most important philosophical question of my life. Is it smaller to be big sometimes? The problem is the following. The mini mushroom unlocks as soon as we leave the first world. So the goal is to get out of the planes as fast as possible. The quickest way to leave the planes is to take the secret exit in 1-2 to quickly dive through the blooper stage and then we can grab a mini mushroom at the end of 4-1. The other option would it be to just play the first world normally and to grab the mini mushroom at the end of stage 2-1. Taking the secret exit means that we have to hop through four stages before we get the mini mushroom. Hopping towards world 2 or seven stages. So small hopping through only four stages is obviously much smaller than small hopping through seven stages. So what's the problem? Well, the problem is the secret blooper course, because the secret blooper course takes place underwater and swimming isn't crouching. Actually, swimming is much bigger than crouching. I prepared an infographic to visualize this. So as we can clearly see here, a crouching Mario is smaller than a swimming one. Case closed, swimming huge and therefore terrible. So look, I'm okay with Mario being a bit bigger than normally because we jump off of a slope or because we happen to get one of those quick hops that make Mario forget to show his crouch animation when jumping because resetting a stage every time one of those happen would just lead to a horrible experience. And, and at the end of the day, the point of those runs isn't to have fun with the games. But I just can't justify to simply swim in this huge and ugly way through the entirety of the blooper course in a run that is supposed to be the small way to beat the game possible. But on the other hand, swimming like a walrus through this stage means that we are able to become smaller sooner. It's the perfect dilemma. Like honestly, I have no idea how to solve this problem. YouTube comment section, do your magic and help me. Which of the two options is the smaller one? I decided to go through the desert for this run since swimming just feels completely wrong to me, but I'm still not sure if this was the right call. Anyway, so basically we try to beat the game without Mario ever getting his feet wet. That means that we first try to duck hop through the entirety of the first world, next we hopefully take the secret exit to the jungle in the second world. In the jungle we follow the normal path until we reach the ghost house, there we take another secret exit to the cloud world and from then on the idea is to play all the stages in our normal order until we hopefully, gracefully, bunny hop our way towards Bowser in the end. Hooray! Cool. So let's hop 
right into the run and let's take a look at all the challenges that await us in the different stages. The whole first world basically doesn't provide much of a problem for us. There are only a couple of things that we have to keep in mind. So first, we aren't allowed to touch checkpoints yet. The reason being, well, um, the reason is that touching a flagpole transforms us into ugly big boy Mario. Big Mario, obviously being big and therefore not small. Other than that, there are only a couple of challenging spots during the entirety of the first world. Dodge hopping for all of those Monty Moles in 1 3 can get a bit annoying, but isn't run threatening by any means. The swings in Lemmy Swingback Castle also provide a bit of a challenge, since, well, since they're sloped surfaces, and sloped surfaces are the natural enemy of everyone who tries to beat a game while permanently crouching. More on this in a second. Finally, the huge gears in the crushing co- Um... The huge gears in the Boom Boom Tower in World 1 are way more challenging to platform through while crouching for the same slippery reasons as the swinging platforms in Lemmy's Castle. But honestly, nothing in the first world is too bad for us. We are off to a really good start. It's time for 2-1. So beating the stage isn't really noteworthy either, it's just a matter of well-executed bunny hops. What is noteworthy about the stage, however, is that at the end of the stage, we finally get the Mini Mushroom. Ladies and gentlemen, we finally have a run going. So how does the tiny crouching Mini Mushroom control. Basically, we now play in the same way as before, but in slow motion. Mini Mario just ascends and descends in a much, much slower way. So this actually makes a couple of things easier for us, while it makes other things much more dangerous. First, whenever we have a long horizontal stage, we have a really easy time to traverse it. The Mini Mushroom offers so many possibilities for precise in-air control when moving horizontally, it is absurd. Like honestly, I love this. So for example, the secret stage in World 2 feels so unbelievably great to play while duck hopping is Mini Mario, I don't know why, but I can't remember any challenge run ever feeling so great to control. The same is true for the first two stages of the jungle. Playing Mario in its small variation just allows us to perform insane jumps, like sometimes we don't even touch the ground of a stage for huge parts of it. It honestly feels like the pinnacle of Mario platforming. So we just got the mini mushroom and we are actually able to breeze through the stages because of it. There aren't any threats seriously blocking our progress in the entirety of World 2. Neither is there anything causing us headaches at the beginning of the channel. The mini mushroom actually makes the game feel easier, at least for now. Because as amazing as the horizontal movement with the mini mushroom mushroom is, vertical movement is a completely different beast, as we're about to find out in the snake tower. Here we basically have to ride this snake to the top of the tower, where a battle against giant boom boom awaits us. So the problem is the following, the mini mushroom really slows us down while in air. But our only way to move during this run is while being in air. The slow jumping speed makes it really easy to perform insanely cool precise jumps while moving horizontally, which is what made the previous stages such a joy to play. Sadly, it also means that whenever the game wants us to change direction quickly, we, well, <laughs> We take forever. There simply is no way for us to do anything fast as Mini Mario Shroom. The second problem is that we simply aren't equipped to dodge threats from above. Every jump has a set height that it accelerates us into the air. If there is a threat above us, that means that we will always have to jump towards the threat since we aren't able to change our position without jumping. Vertical stages, like the Snake Tower, want us to quickly switch between moving to the right and moving to the left, while most threats to Mario's precious health tend to come from above. A recipe for a bunny hopping disaster. So the good news is, it is possible to make it up to Boom Boom's room here. But the bad news, and another sign of bigger problems to come, Boom Boom is terribly difficult. So what is the problem fighting giant Boom Boom? Well, we can't damage him by jumping onto his head. Mini Mario just does not weigh enough to cause Boom Boom headaches. We can jump on top of him as much as we want, Boom Boom simply ignores us. The only way to get Boom Boom's attention is by hitting him with a ground pound. So ground pounding is possible, but getting a ground pound is really awkward since we first have to let go of the down button only to press it fast again afterwards. The second problem here is that we're just so slow that dodging Boom Boom becomes a lot harder. So this one took a couple of tries, but luckily we still managed to beat Boom Boom here. Hooray! In the following ghost house, we take the secret exit and luckily we do not run into any further problems there. And then, well, then it is time for the flight of the Parabeetle stage. <sighs> All right, so that's the stage I'm really, really afraid of. 
So the gimmick of this stage is that we platform on top of those para beetles. The whole stage is an auto scroller. It takes about three minutes start to finish. There is no way to speed this up. It's three minutes of perfect mini bunny hopping. There isn't even a checkpoint. So this dumb stage is insanely difficult. But the real problem here isn't that we aren't able to adjust our position without making a huge and slow leap. The real problem here isn't that the whole stage is vertical or that we're supposed to change our direction all the time. It isn't even that we're unbearably slow in air. The real problem here is something different, something much worse. Ladies and gentlemen, Flight of the Para Beetle is the first time our old arch enemy really flexes its crooked muscles. It's the first time an ancient and evil destructive and run destroying force reveals itself. It's the first time we really run into problems with slopes. Slope surfaces cause us to slide down, so I know what at least one of you is currently thinking. What's the problem? It's just beetles. Where are those slopes? Well, what if I told you that the beetles are the slopes? Something like this is what the hitbox of the small beetles looks like. As we can clearly see, half the beetle is a stupid slope surface dumb beetles. So this is what makes beating this stage so insanely difficult, because if we land on one of those sloped sides of the beetle, we immediately slide down, which almost always means that we immediately murder our friend Mario. We are forced to land precisely on the very small middle part of the beetles. Every single jump in this stage has to be insanely precise. So I was stuck here for hours. It took me forever until I finally, finally reached the top of the stage for the very first time. This up here is the last beetle that we have to land on. So I took all of my courage, you know, I really, really focused and I performed a bunny hop like I never bunny hopped before. So I close in on the beetle, I correct my momentum one final time and I freaking slide off of it. However, there's a rescuing good guy beetle at the bottom. We managed to land on top of it and now, now it's only a question of whether we manage it to make it up there before the huge bullet blaster destroys all our hopes and our dreams and hooray! That's a huge threat to a run out of the way. Stupid beetles. So this victory really energized me, like I was mini Mario duck hopping, like I never mini Mario duck hopped. We managed to make it through the first two stages of the cloud world without any major problems. And would you know it, suddenly we are already in the middle of the slide lift tower. One of the worst stages of any challenge run I've ever done. But we're still riding the wave from our para beetle victory and actually it only takes a couple of tries and suddenly we stand in front of the male witch guarding the tower. Suddenly we're hopping for our lives against Kamek. So I was really worried about that fight. Kamek doesn't really have a viable fast kill strategy as Mini Mario, which means that we have to fight the evil boy witch in the intended way. To make matters even worse, we always have to climb the stone slide tower again if we fail. So climbing this tower isn't as hard as the para beetles were, but there is this silly and ugly fire bro right before the boss, who throws laughable fireballs at us, which are, for whatever reason, terribly difficult to dodge. So I was prepared to be stuck here for hours again, but it was already on our third attempt that this happened. We managed to hit Kamek once, we hit him twice, all that we now need is to hit the dumb witch for one final time. So I took all my courage again, I went all in and my ground pound connected. I was so relieved, I was so worried for this level, but here we are and my ground pound connected, Kamek is no more. So when this happened, I literally threw my arms into the air and let out a loud euphoric sound that probably closely resembled a hooray. So I want everyone to remember this exact moment, the exact moment when Mario's booty lands in Kamek's face here. The moment I raise my arms in celebration and start hooraying. Because this is the exact moment that this run got cursed. From this very moment onwards, everything that can potentially go wrong is about to go wrong. The first catastrophe happens immediately. Because this is how this scene plays out. Yep, I literally wasn't paying attention to what was going on on screen anymore because I was so relieved. Which ended with Mario slowly falling into his death. <sighs> Our win did not count. We have to do it all again. And that is just the beginning of a series of unfortunate mishaps. So it took me about another hour to kill dumb Kamek atop the silly slide lift tower once again. But by this point we know that it can be done. 
the real kicker comes next. So when I record something on my Switch, it always takes a couple of minutes of checking that everything is set up correctly and that the recording works and that the controller is connected and whatnot. So I start the recording session, ready to tackle the upcoming ghost house. I'm on the menu screen, just hitting random buttons to see if the controller is connected and to see if the recording is working, not really paying attention. Everything works. Hooray, I start to pay attention again, ready to hop into the game and my save file is gone. Yep, I deleted the save file by accident while pressing random buttons, testing if the controller was working. Turns out it worked. <sighs> so the way I attempted to route this was to first play through all the stages once, to check out the best route, where potential problems are, what the best way to obtain delicious mini mushroom is, you know, stuff like that. Once everything was set in stone, it was time to grind mini mushrooms and to hopefully beat all the stages in order. So honestly, I really wasn't feeling like beating the game again. So I just quickly speed ran to where we were, grabbed like 5 mini mushrooms and made a save file by hopping through the first castle again. So that means that from now on, we always have to reset the save whenever we run out of mini mushrooms, which makes finding out if the game can be beaten like this a lot more complicated. But that's actually not even the worst thing that happened. The worst thing in this tiny cursed run is actually about to happen to us in this ghost house. Because this ghost house sadly destroys our dreams. There is no small way to make it out of this cursed haunted house. The reason why our tiny run comes to a huge halt here isn't because of the evil ghost. It's not because we aren't good enough to jump through the threats. It's not even because of dumb slopes. It's because of something much more stupid. It's because of those four poles of the apocalypse. We simply cannot grab one of those poles. So first, climbing on those poles would be huge and disgusting, but worse, we can't even grab them according to our own rules. We settled in rule two that we never let go of the crouch button during normal gameplay, with the only exception to perform a ground pound. It's simply not possible to escape this room without letting go of the crouch button. It just doesn't work. The poles require us to press up in order to grab them. The room is empty, but for the disastrous poles and a couple of attacking question blocks. There is no way to reach the door without climbing. There, there is nothing we can do here. It, it's run over. So I was cowering this room for ages, reflecting on every decision I ever made that led to me cowering in this dumb ghost house like a coward. Dark clouds were rising on the horizon. Somewhere it started to rain. I began to freeze. You know, it's, it's obviously just a meme run. And in theory, it isn't even that big of a catastrophe. We can just grab those stupid poles, climb our way up, edit the rules of the run to say climbing is okay because, well, because we can define the rules in the first place, move on and pretend that we're all winners. But I just can't help myself. I really don't want to do that. I don't want to start to bend our rules just so that they fit every situation we ever encounter. What's the point in doing silly meme runs in the first place if we allow ourselves to bend the rules until we win anyway? So. While I was cowering in this little corner, slowly seeing the timer approach zero, I came to the realization that sometimes it is better to proudly accept the failure instead of succeeding at every cost. You know what? It may not be possible to beat New Super Mario Bros. U in the smallest way possible because of those four idiotic poles of doom. But I'll be damned if we didn't give our best to still finish this run, even if we aren't able to win anymore. So slowly, life and motivation was creeping back into me and into Mario. It was time to leave our corner. Let's try to make the best of this silly situation. Let's grab those silly poles. Maybe it's a failure, but we're not going without a fight. Let's put down a finish to be proud of. Time to put the switch back into Satisfy's amazing Sandgrip Pro and time to focus. Because the toughest challenges are still ahead of us. But one small hop after the other. Something clicked while cowering in this corner. Maybe it was the relief of not having to succeed anymore. Maybe it was the burning hatred in my mushroom-shaped soul against those four dumb poles. Or maybe it was just a coincidence. But I started to play with razor-sharp precision. The Boomerang Brothers in the Boomerang Cloud stage weren't able to stop us from bunny-hopping our way slowly towards Bowser. Neither were the Fire Bros in the Snake Block stage a worthy opponent. The next true opponent opponent we face is Ludwig, who resides in the center of his clockwork castle. So the path towards Ludwig is really difficult. But truth be told, good, throw the challenges towards us. We have a failure to rectify for. We have to prove that nobody but Pulse is able to stop us on our tiny quest. Luckily, Ludwig finally proves to be the worthy opponent we're looking for. 
Holy fuzzy, Ludwig puts up a fight. All of his attacks come from above, the window to attack him is really small and we are only able to hop around in super slow motion. Our best chance to win this fight is just to pray that he shoots a pattern that is actually dodgeable during his first attack and then, then to go for the fast kill. Getting the fast kill against Ludwig is already really precise under normal circumstances since the window to attack him is really small but since we are so slow and have to initiate a ground pound before, getting the perfect fast kill is really 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 difficult. Awesome! This is the stage where we die by far the most deaths. This fight is just insanely challenging. Ludwig really pulls out all of the tricks in order to stop us from being so small. But try after try, we improve. At first, we start to dodge the shooting attack consistently. Another countless deaths later, we suddenly almost always get the first fast hit. Slowly, we fight back. Not long until Ludwig's only able to save his neck by cheating. Like here, where he freaking kicks us because we misjudged the final blow by a couple of pixels. Or here, where he is forced to cancel our final ground pound animation in order to save his precious shell. But there is no way to stop a failed plumber on a tiny quest to save his reputation. Not long until we defeat the toughest boss in this run. Not long until Ludwig is forced to leave his castle behind and to flee like a coward. Ladies and gentlemen, the upcoming Bowser's airship stage is one of the easier stages and suddenly we are hopping our way towards the final world. Every tiny hop brings us closer to the Royal Koopa King himself. And this is the point where pole failure from before comes back to haunt us. Alright, so let's do this out of order. It is possible to beat Bowser while being bunny hopping mini Mario. The fight isn't even that hard. The biggest challenge here is to see where we are since we are so tiny in comparison to Bowser. It is possible to beat the red hot elevator where we presumably have to ride this red hot platform to the top. It's a tough stage, but it is possible. Even the rising lava stage is doable in the smallest way possible. There is only one real threat to our already failed run ahead of us. It is either the boat ride or the meteor climb. So here's the thing, we already did a run from Mario Wii while permanently crouching, but without the mini mushroom. And one of the by far most challenging stages in this run was the boat ride in the jungle. Dodging this level in the Wii game took me far over 100 tries, it was insane. So one of our two options to proceed here is to do another boat ride, but this time the ride takes place in the final world, not in the fifth. Which means that the level itself is much more difficult, but we also aren't able to kill anything by simply jumping on top of it. Our only way to kill something on top of the boat is by ground pounding, which makes defeating anything so much more precise and difficult. Thinking about this boat ride honestly made me anxious. That's such a challenge. So luckily we can take the secret exit in 8-1 and swap the boat ride for the meteor climb stage. Is what I would say, but sadly this option is really horrible as well, for all the wrong reasons. And this is where the dumb four poles of doom come into play again. See, this stage has a section at the end that can only be done by climbing. So theoretically we aren't allowed to climb, but we already climbed those stupid poles before. So why not climb in this stage as well? The run already is kind of over and if we climb at one point, then surely we can climb here as well. This by the way is why I find it so frustrating that we weren't able to do this with our simple and easy to remember tiny rule set from the beginning. Because if we say climbing is okay in one stage, then why not just say it's okay here as well? Why not just skip the insane boat ride that has me so worried? There are no stakes anymore, nothing matters, it's total nihilism. So honestly, this stage dilemma almost got me to scrap the run. I just wasn't able to face the absurd challenge of riding this boat in the smallest possible way knowing that I always could skip it by just bending the rules a bit. I wasn't able to start the boat grind. It's just so stupid. We figured out the fastest route to grab a mini mushroom. We hopped our way through countless stages. We refused to take a swim. We slided off of beetles only to come back stronger again. We defeated Kamek twice. We deleted our save file, but we still didn't give up. We tore, scratched and clawed our way forward against the cheating Ludwig. But those stupid four poles, those idiotic four poles of doom in this room without any real challenge, those four dumb poles are the only obstacle that we can't pass. I just wasn't willing to accept that. So I went back to this horrible room where everything started to collapse. I cowered in the exact same spot where we almost left the run to die before, thinking about a way to solve this mess. And suddenly, I had an idea. What about wall jumps? There is this tiny jump window 
after landing that allows us to get a wall jump. So just a single wall jump isn't enough to get us up to the door. But as it turns out, ladies and gentlemen, as it turns out, it is actually possible to climb walls while using the Mini Mushroom. Mini Mario descends so slowly that we are actually able to slowly make our way up the wall by chaining wall jumps together and by perfectly timing our worlds. Ladies and gentlemen, that's it. That's actually a way to skip the four poles of doom. This way, we're actually able to reach the door without ever letting go of the down button. So is the solution silly? Absolutely. But it is in line with our rules, which means that we suddenly have a run going again. So the meteor climb is out of the question. It's the boat ride. The boat ride is the last obstacle standing between us and a tiny victory. If we manage to bunny hop through the entire boat trip, then we officially managed to beat New Super Mario Bros. U in the smallest way possible. So figuring out how to make this tourist trip less deadly took me a while, but a combination of cleverly loading in the moles too early so that they commit suicide in lava while using the shell store advantage while playing highly concentrated and perfectly precise actually does the trick. Ladies and gentlemen, we did it. We not only did just prove that it is possible to beat New Super Mario Bros. U while permanently crouching, we actually did it in the smallest and way more difficult way. Hooray! That was quite a run. I'm honestly so glad that we actually found a way to do this meme run. So the next time someone asks you, what is the smallest way to beat New Super Mario Bros. U Deluxe? Now you finally know the answer. Anyway, I hope all of you enjoyed this silly tiny video. If you did, don't forget to leave me a thumbs up and maybe you feel especially like hitting the subscribe button before the subscribe button hits back. I hope that all of you have a wonderful day and to see you soon. Goodbye!